today is the day, and we're bringing you in, and we're going to bring in three Facebook minutes Live as well. Until showtime. Um, we're going to be looking at two prophets today, and what I find interesting is the way that the writer describes this person. Didn't say he was a prophet in one case, but the gift of prophecy, and uh, versus the office of a prophet. And so we've taught on that extensively over the years, and I find it interesting how the scripture specifically says gift of prophecy. It's a blessing because it gives us another example of someone who is gifted and doing the work of the Lord. Two minutes All right, until showtime. Starting. Sister Javelin Johnson, welcome, sister. God bless you. Yes, invite your friends. Appreciate it. Oh, yes. And so, Sister Spivey, welcome. Good to see you, sister. Invite your friends. Let people know we're here. Um, it's, it's just interesting to see how the word in its subtleties and just little things can, in fact, be so specific. And we'll see that in a moment when we look at this in the word. But each one given a gift, each of you there, you have a gift. You have an assignment. You have a work to do. We're not just here uh, idly on the planet. One minute until showtime. Transported to heaven. I know a lot of folks probably are <coughs> just sort of sitting around waiting for the trumpet to blow. I say, I'm waiting for Gabriel and Michael and somebody to show up. Well, it's Jesus who's going to show up, folks. <laughs> But while we wait for him, we must be about our father's business. We should be doing something. It didn't require a lot. I think there was one, one um, colloquial phrase folks use, each one reach one. Just one person gets saved as a result of your testimony, as a result of your life. What a blessing. What a blessing that would be. Already we'll be live here in a moment and we're waiting. Your show will go live in five go seconds. Ahead. Four. I think three, we brought everybody two, in. Okay. One. Here we go. All right. Welcome to Prophetic Insights. All of you there. Uh, Prophetic Insights with Lauren and Regina Do Ministries. We're so glad that you're with us today, whether you're Facebook Live YouTube Live, or Blog Talk Radio, or MixLR. Uh, I'm looking at the various monitors, and we're all here. So, thank God for you. Uh, tonight, I think we have a most interesting discussion, teaching. Now, last evening, thank heavens, those of you that missed it, we did talk about and expound on two of our five books and so if you haven't read them or want more information go and pull up the YouTube from last night and uh, listen or the MixLR and you'll get a good understanding hopefully of Teddy Bear Stolen Innocence and shh don't say a word about this alright well let's pray as we get into this evening's um, topic. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for another day. Thank you that you know what's happening here uh, in Southern California. We thank you that, oh God, that your hand of mercy is upon those dear souls there in Houston and the surrounding areas and all that water. I know some I probably thought that it was another Noah event, event but uh, not quite. But a lot of water, and so bless them. 
bless them to find the dry ground and bless them to find places to be until things are repaired. Prophetess, thank God for you. So, Father, we just thank you and we bless you and praise you now. And bless each one that's on this line tonight, each one that's here, wherever they are. Let them be blessed, let them be encouraged, let them be built up in the most holy faith. And we'll be careful to thank you, Father, praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, it is something, the devastation that can happen to a whole city and surrounding areas. And it's like, <laughs> I was, <coughs> my wife and I, we were in Houston just a few years ago. Did not realize that it was, it's that lower, it's built that way that that much water is around it or in it or what have you. Uh, it's low and so it's amazing. But thank God that the, the, the numbers of deaths so far are fairly low. And uh, we do remember, I believe, a policeman this afternoon apparently went to save someone today or sometime. And went under and they couldn't get him out. But, um, you know, I, I sent a thing around on uh, Facebook, I think yesterday, maybe today, about how water, the pressure of water, and the fact that you cannot, uh, you can't play with the water and you can't fight it, especially that much. It's dangerous, and so thank God for watching over those people, his souls. Tonight we want to look at this the first person is um, Judas. Bar Sabas. Now, I'll tell you, when I was looking at the various um, commentaries, there are a bunch of Judas. We have Judas, the brother of James. We have a Judas the brother of Jesus. <laughs> we have Judas Iscariot. We know who that is. What a name. And then Judas, called Jude. And then Judas, the son of um, Jacob. <laughs> Very popular name, Judas. Very popular name. And of course, our character tonight Judas Bar Sabbath that's the surname he was the leading member of the Apostolic Church of, at Jerusalem and uh, it's it's to me always funny when we hear people saying I'm a part of the Apostolic Church and I say well I, we wonder if the apostles that they're following are they alive or are they dead or both that's kind of a inside quip I guess you could put it a joke but the apostles basically through Jesus Christ's instruction were the first to get the church going in the book of Acts and so we'll find out, we're going to go to this 15th chapter and learn a little bit. Um, we learn one thing that stands out about this Barsabbas. Um, 15, verse 22. Then pleased it the apostles and elders. You know, I love reading the word because it gives us so much in teaching the word information and knowledge if we kind of pay attention to it the fact that the apostles and elders with the whole church so everybody had a role or a position everybody was not an apostle everyone was not an elder or a member at large 
regardless of the title, the salvation of mankind is our all of our should be all of our goal. Matthew twenty eight verse nineteen. Uh, so please the apostles, the elders, the whole church, everybody was in agreement to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. So we have Barnabas and we have Bar Sabbath. So it said with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, here he is, surname Bar Sabbath, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And so they may be like our um, men's ministry type, maybe deacons. But they had a title. They were chief among the brethren. And if you think about it, we don't see too often in Scripture designations for the um, sisters. We do have the prophetess and the seers, thank God. And all of those that gave, that had money. <laughs> I believe they had their husband's money <laughs> and they used it to bless the ministry. Just like some folks today. Alright, so this scripture we'll see in a moment. Uh, a scripture, actually let me go to that verse and then we'll we'll come back over it. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves. So, I think a lot of people don't know that uh, Silas was a prophet as well. And I don't know if we're going to, let me just see, yeah, we, are, we will see it in our thing. A lot of people may not know that he was. All right. Um. Let me read it. So, and Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. The one thing about the gift of prophecy, the office of prophecy, the word of prophecy, when it comes, it should be, if it's not a word of correction, if it's not a word of direction, then it's more than likely should be a word of confirmation. Uh, we see a hand raised. We'll get with you after our teaching. Glad that you're there, Han. And all of the others that are parked throughout the uh, different chat rooms we have. So, they use their gifts to the glory of God. And when... God can give you a confirmation right then and there, right now. That is a, a good thing. It's a blessing. You don't have to wait. And especially when it's a you know, confirmation from the Lord. And you've already gotten it. And you've got a re, uh, reaffirming of it. It's really neat. So, chosen uh, Silas uh, to accompany Paul. Barnabas of the delegates of the church going to Antioch. This all happened around A.D. 47. Now, and we'll find as we read, if we do get this, all this reading, that uh, this Justice, or Judas, actually went back to Jerusalem. Let's look more now. We have some a little bit more information on Judas bar Sabbaths. Uh, not a lot, but we have, I think, enough to help us at least know. Uh, uh, again, for those of you that are gifted, especially those that are prophetically gifted, to know that everyone that is a prophet or prophetess, that's typically the office. And when you walk in the office, it's almost like, uh, it's the same as being the pastor, except you're the prophet, you're the prophetess. Same as being the bank, except you are the prophet, etc. Now, when you exercise the gift of prophecy, 
that it's then, of course, all of it's using the glory of God. But more than likely, your primary uh, gifting or what have you may be, may be, may not necessarily be, may be something else. God is so articulate in how he gives the gifts to all of us. And then leaves it uh, at his, of course, direction for us to, to use them. Let's go on now. So Judas of Silas, a delegate from the church in Jerusalem, to the Gentile Christians of Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia. They were appointed to convey the letter containing the decision of the apostles and the elders with the whole church regarding the attitude to be taken by Gentile Christians toward the Mosaic Law, and also to explain the same things by word of mouth. You know, there arose that bit of, uh, you could almost say confusion, or an attempt to bring confusion, or attempt to uh, bring division, and we have much of that today, unfortunately, in the church. Um, it's just unfortunate that there are those who want to go their own way. Or there are those who are not leaders that are able to embrace uh, the whole team. And so this thing arose back then about the circumcision and all of the law. And it had to be handled because God did not ordain or make it be a um, part of the process of salvation. Circumcision related to the law, the law of Moses. Now, from a totally different perspective, a health perspective, for a young male child to be circumcised even today is a good thing from a health reason talk to your doctors look the research up it's there um, there's some statistics that really show the difference in men that are circumcised versus those that are not sister Kathy good to see you there um, in the chat room praise God so they accompanied Paul and Barnabas to Antioch, and being themselves also prophets, preachers, they not only handed over the epistle, but stayed some time in the city preaching and teaching. Uh, they seemed to have gone no further than Antioch, for they were dismissed in peace from the brethren that those that had been sent. And see, there was some confusion, some challenge. But thank God it got resolved. Devil always wants to get in and uh, disrupt. But we have to learn to rebuke him. You have to learn to tell the devil, get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. All right, let's uh, look at some word here. Let's see, we're doing good on time, okay. Uh, let me just go through this and then we'll get to the word. Kind of an overview. According to the King James Version, Judas returned to Jerusalem without Silas, who remained at Antioch, and afterward became Paul's companion. I find it interesting that Paul would hang with prophets, or those that have the gift of prophecy. Paul was anointed, of course, and Paul saw much. He, he was obviously a seer. Um, who remained in Antioch after, okay. The oldest manuscripts, however, they tell us, omit some of the information. And that's something else, too, when you're studying. Be sure that if you go to do some of the studying on your own, that you at least start, if you don't get... If you can't start with the Greek, you can't start with the Hebrew, then at least, or the Aramaic, then at least start with the King James Version of the Bible. And 
pray that you are getting all when you start going to the other versions because as they allude in the notes that some of the version some of the versions of the writing they omit certain things um, they have that liberty as a uh, person who's a writer and a commentator to interpret accordingly but they also have to note it so that you know some do some may not all right uh let's go on let's go on let's see what else uh i think we'll get to the bible let's get to the word nothing like the word god all right so we're going to get to chapter 15 and certain men which came down from judea taught the brethren and said except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, this is before these fellows got the word to go and deal with it. But just to see, see that, that was what they said, you know. And think of the people today that probably wouldn't be in the church if they felt they had to be circumcised. There's a whole move afoot, and there has been, uh, folks that don't want to be circumcised for whatever reason even though medically they claim it's a much better thing so we have all of the all of the above going on okay uh, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dis disputation with them they determined so you know I mean you got to think it's something but remember the church is getting started and you have these ones who have been called to do something so you, you, we're going to have these things. Even today, you see these people, and whether they're denominations or non-denominations or what have you, and they're starting their ministries and their work. And um, I should have brought my over our, our all of our information, but you know, start out with certain things. You start with the Bible, and then to take care of the business, you have your bylaws and you have your minutes and all that and um, so they started out with just issues that had to be dealt with to keep from having the church further uh, divided we have enough uh, division today I think of all the church splits that go on and that have gone on and folks split for some of the most crazy reasons all right, so they went to Jerusalem, and we said, um, make sure I said that to you guys clearly, Paul and Barmas and um, certain others. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia, Samaria, and still preaching. That's the one thing, wherever we go, wherever we are, we should always be declaring the work. Uh, thank God I got some new cards and we're going to start getting those out to folks and little whatever little things we can use to be a, a curiosity thing to folks. Well, why do you have this? And then that gives us a way to tell them about the Lord. I remember when I just wore my cross to this Fortune 100 company and they didn't want any Bible class, didn't want any prayer. But I tell you, after a while, they needed some prayer, and they asked for it. But it's because I wore a cross every day. I didn't say anything. It was they were unique crosses too. They were designer designer crosses, but it was meant to be eye catchers to get people talking. See, I didn't. I wouldn't talk. I didn't have to go to them because if I go talk to them on the job, they could write me up. But if they come talk to me on the lunch hour or the break or something, not a problem. All right, let's go on. So they uh, did those things that they had to do. Um, Apostles and elders came together to consider the matter. Peter rose up, of course, Peter the big mouth. <laughs> the man with the, the word. And started to get into it. So men and brethren, you know how what a 
that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by the mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Not just hear it, but believe. And God would know the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So just bring that together. It's not just something for one uh, group of people, but to all men. So we go on and go through this. Um, then as he went through, he did all the preaching. And you can read the detail if you like. This 15th chapter really get through all of the, the discussions and the things. He said, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles. See, God's no respecter of person. Still, like all the Muslims, God's still uh, doing things to confound them. You know, we're bringing someone here that's been doing incredible miracles among the Muslims. They're getting healed, getting delivered, and getting saved, coming out of that. So that's what these ones. So um, let me go on down here to um, get all the way down here to verse, here we are. Then it pleased the apostles and elders in the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul. Here we are, and Barnabas, namely Judas. So this is our surname. So this is our Barsabbas. Okay, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Let's go on. And uh, so they they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders and the brethren, and greeting unto the brethren which are the Gentiles in Antioch. Syria and Sicily. Sicilia. For as much as we've heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you <laughs> with words subverting your souls, saying you must be circumcised and to keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. So they had to deal with that just as today. Folks will come with stuff that's not in the word, and when they do, that's why you need to know the word. You can let them know that's not what the word says. Because there are folks that will add to the word. There are folks that will take away from the word. Uh, and their various persuasions or what have you. So as the men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have sent therefore Judas, here he is, and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. So they not only had it in writing, but they had the living witness available. Um, and so what they did is they gave them some other things to do, and they basically told them, um, let's see. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, when they got gathered there, um, and Judas and Silas being prophets, here we are, Okay, also themselves exhorted, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. So they not only did some preaching, some teaching, but they also gave some confirmation and the exhortation to build them back up in the most holy faith and get them on the track. And after they had tarried their space, they left let go in peace from the brethren until and the apostles. Notwithstanding it to please Silas, to please Silas to abide there. Remember we said he stayed with Paul. Paul also and Barnabas continued on teaching and preaching the word of the Lord. Alright, and some days after Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. That's the other thing that, again, these are things that folks do today. They do them in different ways uh, and for different reasons uh, in terms of fellowship meetings, in terms of the brotherhood meetings, the women's meetings, all the different things. But fellowship is most important because if you really think about it, we, what fellowship do we have with the world? 
other than to go to work. Once we do our jobs, then what is it that we have to do with the world? So fellowship is very important. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname, remember this is John Mark, but Paul thought not good to take him with him. Okay, there was a little challenge there. Who departed from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. All right, we go on. So, and there was contention. All right, so again, this is showing that in the midst of all of this great work that was being done, that needed to be done, there were those contentions and challenges. Remember, we have all the different personalities. When you have personality mixes, you have a lot of different things. Brother Latron, so glad that you're there. If we had a piano on here, we'd have take time out and have a, a, a solo. <laughs> have some good music. God, God bless you, brother. All right, and so they had some contention. They had some challenges. But they nevertheless still maintained their fellowship. And this is something that people today in the church, I believe, need to, to really understand that everybody's not going to like everybody. We have to love everybody, but not like. And that all the personalities will not necessarily be able to function. But we still must love and we still must go forth and find ways to embrace rather than to try to destroy each other. We see it. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren. Okay, so Paul made the choice there. All right. And uh, Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren, the grace of God. And he went through Syria, Sicily, confirming the churches. So we see in that scenario the uh, a bit of and, and this is where some of the versions have left it out, but justice was still in the, in the scene, still there. Because it says the oldest man, manuscripts uh, give in verse 40 that um, our dear Justice Barsabbas was yet a part of the team. It's something how you know, we, we, we all have such affirmation to the Bible. And yet, when we discover in our studies, we find bits and pieces that have been changed over these hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's like, hmm, how much does that weigh or not weigh towards our salvation? From what I've seen, most of the things that have been changed, they're really not salvation issues, but for some people they could be. All right, let's look at one more person today. Shanta Jones. Ah, we've got Brother Latron on the piano and Sister Shante. Well, if we had the piano and the drums, we could have a little set here, <laughs> a good music set. That would be neat. Um, the other person we'll look at today, since we're really covered our dear Judas fellow, let's look at um, Lucius of Serene. And we've got just a few more minutes on our program today. So we're covering these prophets. And just so you can see again their behavior, how they interacted, how they worked, uh, we see the phone lines. We've got some more people on phone. So coming on lines, uh, raised hands, we'll get to you just as soon we're going to get off the air here in a moment, and we'll take that call, those calls with the hands raised. Um, and so we'll take Lucius, one more, uh, of Cyrene, and um, now I'll say this right up front, some people try to say Lucius of Cyrene was Luke, but no one can prove that, so... You know, they put all these things out there for us as we're studying and, and, and digesting all of this. But it says, I believe, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And when you just get one person off on some other tangent, then we leave them be. 
All right, let's uh, the uh, name of his meaning of his name. Don't they, they're not giving it as they normally do, but he's considered a Christian prophet and or teacher from Cyrene who helped lead the church at Antioch to set apart Saul, remember, and Barnabas for missionary service. So let's see what it says in Acts 13.1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets. And, and I like this wording, certain prophets. So it lets us know that there was not just one, but there could have been a company of prophets. Could have been a school of prophets. We don't know, but there was, there was probably more than one. And it says uh, certain prophets and teachers. Notice it didn't say anything about preachers, but teachers. And if you keep, as you go through the book of Acts, uh, more teaching went on. Just like when Jesus said more teaching, and folks shouting at folks and preaching and carrying on. But remember, Paul said in, in, in Romans that the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to certain folks. So it's necessary. God ordained it. Uh, but here we got prophets and teachers. And so here they are, as are Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger. Now, we've heard this name before, and this Niger gives us to know that he was a black man uh, from some place, probably some part of Africa. And then we have Lucius, of Cyrene and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. All these great men together. And uh, it's neat when it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. <laughs> and it can be done, folks. Let me um, pull up, here we go, Acts, and uh, go to the 13th chapter. That was just, okay. And so as they ministered to the Lord, these are these, all these people, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, so I have, a, I believe, that when the Holy Ghost speaks and it's a company of people, that they all heard in their spirit. I don't believe it was an audible voice, but they heard in their spirit. They got a, a yes or, or a check or guidance, and, and they all were on one accord because they were fasting. They were been obviously praying together. And the Holy Ghost said, Separate me now, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, folks, always be very careful who lays hands on you because you don't want the wrong transferring spirits to get on you. But they laid hands on them under the anointing, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Sister Karen, welcome from Colorado. All right, so uh, they departed and went to Seleucia and from there to S Cyprus and on and on. Now, let me just, I think we will come to him a little later, but I want to just point out in this 13th chapter, which we've taught this in the last nine years, somewhere in here in one of these, one of our teachings. And when they had gone through the Isle of Pappas, remember that? They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, as I wanted to just point that out. And we'll get to him as we're going through, I believe, let's see, um, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Matter of fact, let me go back. I'm pretty certain we've done so many things. We didn't. We didn't. So, good. Uh, I have the false prophets and the real prophets are separate on this listing here. But understand, so we had all those prophets together and then they encounter 
a false prophet. Point to you, to me, today, there are a lot of true prophets, but there's also the false prophets. And we've been warned in a number of places, Peter and Timothy and all through there, that in the latter days, men will be given over to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and that's all these false prophets. And there, there are many. Okay, so let's go on. I um, want to point out the early church tried, probably incorrectly, to identify him with, I told you that already, thus uh, we talked about the African. And then let's now look at one other thing where he is also, you know, that's why when you have family in church, we should never, shouldn't be alarmed. I, I'm not convinced that it should be all run by the family. If you've got a lot of different people, should have a, everybody should have an opportunity. But uh, look what we find in Romans 16. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius, <laughs> this is Paul, and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen. So Lucius, Jason, a name folks use today sometimes, Sosipater, they were related to Paul. So everybody is not going to hell in the family. Sometimes we encounter families where there's just like, say, one person. Alrighty, well that's our review for today of the various prophets. And just to see that company of prophets, or that, it's not even company, let me, let me restate that, that group of prophets together and teachers. So folks can get along, but it takes, I believe, maturity. It takes understanding. It takes a willingness to be a part of the team if that's what God has allowed and orchestrated. Because if you look around and see now, so many of the so-called prophets, they seem to be alone. But yes, in the Word, in the Old Testament, they had companies of prophets. They had the schools of the prophets. And if you are gifted as a prophet or have the gift of prophecy or what have you, or a seer, just understand that there may come a time when you'll be able to interact and work with those of the craft or the office or the position. Alrighty, well, praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, this teaching and this learning about these, these great people and the works that they did. We thank you for your people today, each one under our voice, and the things that you've called them to do. Bless them, those who are gifted, irrespective of what and how they're gifted, how you, you put them together. Bless them, Lord, to come forth and to use those gifts for your glory and for the building of the kingdom as we uh, await your return. We thank you. We thank you for the folks being encouraged, built up the most holy faith, and coming forth with great testimonies to give you honor, to give you glory. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, we're going to quit while we're out of time. The lines are filling up, and so we're going to take some calls today. Uh, and we thank God for each of you. Remember, we're back hopefully tomorrow. And see, today so we've got a couple more days. And uh, so join us back tomorrow uh, at 5 o'clock. Tell your friends. Tell someone. Appreciate it. God bless you. And remember, with all of the pain that they're feeling in Houston, and the different ones that pain is not, it's not for life. It's not going to always be. Sometimes we get deliverance right away. Sometimes it takes time. And we pray for those as they go through their pain and come out with victory. Pray that ways are made, doors are open, situations occur, and that uh, they'll, they'll know that pain is not for life. Already, God bless. God keep you in Jesus' name. All right, YouTube, 
glad you're there and uh, we will look forward to being back on YouTube on next uh, tomorrow actually let's <laughs> start saying next week but tomorrow so join us we'll have the information down in the description bar if you want to check out our website or any of the information we have um, just know that uh, I'm telling you the Lord is soon to come and uh, all of us that are in the body let's learn like we just read today how to work together and not fight each other Alrighty, be blessed in Jesus' name.